everyone. Welcome back to these processes from the Project Management Body of Knowledge. Now we're looking into planning our risk responses. And of course, we're in the Project Risk Management Knowledge area, but we're still in the planning process group because we're planning out all of the parts of our project management plan. Uh, and we've identified our risks, we've performed qualitative risk analysis, and maybe quantitative risk analysis, but not always. Uh, we've determined how what's the probability and impact of these things happening. And now we want to look at the responses that we're going to take in case these risks do occur. So planning risk responses is the process of developing options, selecting strategies, and agreeing on actions to address overall project risk, as well as treat individual project risks. The key benefit of this process is it identifies appropriate ways to address overall project risk and individual project risks. And this process also allows resources or allocates resources and inserts activities into project documents um, to plan for those risks and just in case they do happen. So tools, techniques, outputs and inputs for planning risk responses. We've got our project management plan as an input, project documents, enterprise environmental factors and organizational process assets. We've got tools and techniques, our favorite expert judgment of course, data gathering, interpersonal and team skills, strategies for threats, strategies for opportunities that we'll see, contingent response strategies and strategies for overall project risk, data analysis, decision making as well. Outputs that we'll see as part of planning risk responses are change requests if we need to make a change to a baseline document as a result of a risk happening or a mitigation for a risk. So project management plan updates we might need to do as well. We might need to update any of the project management plan parts and project documents updates where we might need to update things like costs, assumptions or the project schedule. So planning risk responses, as we've seen, can have that input into perform integrated change control because we might need to make a change request to a baseline document. Planning the project management plan and any of those project management plan parts that might be impacted by a change that we need to make if a risk does occur. And of course, any of those project documents too. Here's an overview of planning risk responses. Effective and appropriate risk responses can minimize individual threats and maximize individual opportunities. It can also reduce overall project risk exposure. Unsuitable risk responsibles can have the opposite effect and that's not what we want, obviously. So we don't want more risk on our project. We don't want our project to fail. We want less risk and we wanna be managing it so that it almost disappears if we can help it. Risk responses should be appropriate for the significance of the risk. So we did our probability and impact. Uh, does it have a high probability and impact? Then maybe we need to have a, a very severe or a serious risk response. Cost effective it should be as well and realistic within the project context. Is it a small, tiny little project just within one team? Then maybe we need to think about just a cost, cost effective methods of managing that risk. And it needs to be agreed upon by all parties uh, and owned by someone who, uh, who's owning that risk, usually from the affected area as well. Specific actions are developed to implement the agreed upon risk response strategy, including primary strategies or backup strategies that we might need to uh, get rid of or reduce the risk of something happening. Let's look at the inputs in more detail. We've got the project management plan where we might have our resource management plan, the risk management plan as well. So our process that we agreed upon, how we would gather uh, and look at and, and analyze the risks for our project. And of course, the cost baseline. So will the cost be affected? Will the resources, uh, you know, do we have the appropriate amount of resources for our, to do the risk responses and to allocate risk responses to as well? Project documents we might need as an input are our project schedule, lessons learned, project team assignments, so our resource assignment matrix or RACI that we saw uh, previously, resource calendars, so who is available and when, risk register, risk report, and our stakeholder register to see who is involved in our project. Enterprise environmental factors, so what is the environment that we're operating in? And as an input for our project, we may need to know the overall risk appetite 
and thresholds of key stakeholders because if there is a low risk threshold, we may need to do some serious work when we're planning the risk responses to bring those risks back under control. Of course, we might have organizational process assets as well. So templates for the risk management plan or the risk register or the risk report, historical databases and lessons learned repositories from similar projects. Let's look at the tools and techniques for planning risk responses. We're going to need our favorite expert judgment from all of the experts in different areas. Uh, we can't possibly know everything as a project manager, so we need to gather that expertise from the relevant people. And this could be people with threat response strategies. So maybe they're in the, the business area that we're delivering the project to, and they know a, a, a few different ways that they can manage these risks that, we're, that we might be bringing in as part of, the, part of the project. Opportunity response strategies as well, contingent response strategies, and overall project risk response strategies. We're going to need data gathering to gather that data on the individual project risks and overall project risks then we might need things like facilitation, meetings, semi-structured interviews uh, with those risk owners so that uh, they understand the information and we can get the risk responses that they might have planned to. Interpersonal and team skills as always. And so for our interpersonal and team skills, we're going to need those team skills to be facilitating meetings, to be extracting information and to help people understand the, the risks that are coming in and so that they can understand how they need to respond to those risks and note those down. Facilitation is a big factor here. So we will need to facilitate those meetings, guide those meetings, make sure everyone is on the same page. Now there are strategies for threats and strategies for opportunities and you'll see these in the key concepts for risk management. But strategies for threats that we want to go through could be escalating that threat. So escalating it to uh, an authority beyond the project, uh, you know, maybe an executive level. Maybe we want to avoid it or wait for another time. We want to transfer it to another party. Usually this is insurance, for example, where we're buying an insurance policy uh, and now we're paying for that. Uh, but now they take on all of the risk, for example. We might need to mitigate, uh, take steps to mitigate the risk. How can we get rid of the risk on our own through our process or people? Or we might, if it's small enough, we might just accept that the risk is there. And it's the same for opportunities. You'll see escalate and accept as the same, um, so similar responses, because maybe we want to escalate that opportunity to a level beyond our project. We can't just say, oh, you know, we're just going to take this opportunity. Maybe we want to take it to a higher level so everyone understands that it's there. And of course, accepting opportunities, um, just basically doing nothing about it, but accepting that it's there is, is also a similar approach. So of course we could exploit that opportunity. We could share it with someone else. So another part of the organization, another company itself, um, and we could enhance that opportunity. So maybe we could take advantage of it and, and make it better than it already was. Contingent response strategies. For some risks, it's appropriate for the project team to make a response plan that will only be executed under certain predefined conditions. So if it's believed that there will be sufficient warning to implement that plan, events that trigger that contingency, contingency response, such as missing intermediate milestones, for example, or gaining higher priority with a seller, and they should all be defined and tracked. So contingent response in the, in the event that something does happen. Risks, risk responses identified using this technique are often called contingency plans or fallback plans and include identified triggering events. So if something happens, do we need a contingency plan? Strategies for overall project risk include all of those uh, threats and opportunities information that we saw before, avoiding, accepting, exploiting, sharing, enhancing, transferring or mitigating the project risk. Data analysis might need to be done where we're looking at different alternatives and cost benefit analysis. So for the risk response, does it cost a lot and only give us a small amount of benefit or does it cost a little and give us a large amount of benefit? Then that's something that we need to know. We need to analyze that cost versus benefit for the planning risk responses that, that we're going through. 
Of course, we're gonna to need to make decision making based on that as well. And factors that could influence this are the cost of the response, as we saw with cost benefit analysis, the likely effectiveness of the response, resource availability, level of impact if it does happen, and the effect of the response on related risks. Maybe it has, maybe it's one risk, but it has an effect on other risks as well. We do need to know. And introduction of secondary risks, so additional risks if it does happen. Outputs for planning risk responses. We have change requests. Planned risk responses may result in a change request to the cost or schedule baseline or other components of the project management plan. Change requests are processed for review and disposition through our famous Perform Integrated Change Control Process 4.6. And of course it goes through the Change Control Board or gets approved by the project sponsor or whatever you have agreed in your change management plan. Project management plan updates. Any part of the project management plan may need to be updated because any part of the project management plan has an input into risk, as we saw. Schedule could, could you know, affect our risk. Cost could be going off track. Defects could be found in our quality. Resources might not be available. Procurement third parties might be acting up or not uh, doing anything according to the contract that we had all signed. Scope might be you know, not being met. All of these things are a risk and hence could be updated if we need to modify these as part of our risk responses. Project documents updates as well. We might need to, uh, to update cost forecasts in the future, project schedule for the future, our risk register and risk report as these things are found and the responses are identified, then this can go out to our executives and project stakeholders in the form of that risk report. And that is all the detail of planning risk responses for the project management body of knowledge.